Shanti. You have heard in the scriptures that the deities drank nectar, Amrit. Now Baba says, I am giving you the nectar to drink and if you want to become a deity, you drink it. So what is the nectar? The nectar of knowledge. That is why it is called Gyan Amrit. So Baba says, I am giving you the nectar of knowledge and you drink it and you also inspire others to have it. And then Baba says, those who drink nectar become elevated. Now, you see, the many people realize Many people are aware of the relevance or the benefits of meditation these days. So people will tell you that one should meditate, must meditate. But then very few people understand the relevance and the importance of knowledge. And Baba says that if you drink the nectar, that is, if you uh, take the knowledge, then you become elevated. Now today I will tell you something which is, which, which, which you have to listen to carefully. <laughs> so there are at least four words which we will understand today. There is consciousness. There is attitude, there is perception, and then there is thought. So, you know, in the world out there, people are always trying to tell you that change the way you act. But then there are some people who are wiser than that, and then they tell you that change the way you think because if you don't change the way you think you can't change the way you behave but then what we don't understand is just knowing that we need to change the way we think will not bring a lot of result it will bring temporary result but then in the you know, longer if you want to sustain a change in, way, in the way you think, you have to understand that there are four things connected with thought. So first is the consciousness, then there is the attitude, then there is the perception, and then there is the thought. Now, let's take a very simple uh, example of um, you know, if you, if you see a beggar on a street, okay, and then you have been trained to think that this beggar is connected to a wider network of, you know, people who cheat and loot and so if you have had that information and that's part of your awareness, that is consciousness, so you can use these two words interchangeably, awareness or consciousness. So if that, that is what has been fed into your awareness, then your attitude towards the beggar will be not very hospitable but hostile. And then your perception will be, this person is not trying to take help but this person is trying to loot me or deceive me and then the, your thoughts will follow the same and then how you behave will also follow according to that. So this is why the consciousness or the awareness of who am I, who is the other fellow, what's going on, these are parts of the consciousness which, which we hold inside. And then if you have an idea about who you are, 
which you always have you carry some idea about yourself about who you are and who the other party is and what's going on and that's these are the broad three aspects of consciousness and the kind of awareness you have about these things will influence your attitude your perception and your behavior so whether it be thought word or action everything will follow from these things so this is why when baba comes he doesn't tell you do this don't do that or don't do this do that or he doesn't say you think like this don't think think like that he gives you knowledge about who you are who the other person is and what's going on so he tells you who you are that is you are a soul you are a child of god your what are your qualities what are your virtues so he makes you self aware he makes you aware that other people around you are not perpetrators but victims of their own sanskars so they are not doing anything against you they are doing it for themselves so it's because of who they are and what their sanskars is that they are behaving the way they are behaving and then the third thing that baba tells you about what's going on is this is the time for karmic settlement so baba has told us that we have taken 84 births and in the last 63 births we have been very body conscious and according to that we have acted under the influence of lust anger ego attachment and greed and created a lot of karmic burden by engaging in negative karma so when we have acted like that now all that has to come for settlement so whenever something comes up don't look at it as something that has come to disturb you but something but as something that has come, come to make you stronger by giving you the opportunity to learn whether it is endurance or knowledge or whatever so baba says that when you have this idea about everything when this is what you hold in your awareness then automatically your attitude towards everyone and everything will be very different and when your attitude is different you perceive the same phenomena differently so we have a we have a video mechanism inside right so you are you are always taking a scene and then you are projecting it here and playing it here so that is your percep perception and your attitude or your consciousness determines your perception so the scene would be the same but how you will perceive it will be very different and then according to that how you think about it or respond to it will be very different so this is why baba says and who will become elevated so when baba says you will become elevated so elevated you will become by doing good karma so when you act in an elevated manner you will be able to stay elevated now baba says action comes very you know in the uh, later on so you, if you work on your consciousness that is you take this gyan amrit and you make it part of your awareness then slowly gradually it will influence the way you behave or your action and then you will become elevated so this is why baba doesn't come and tell you do this do that think like this think like that but tells you who you are who the other person is and what's going on that is why in the gyan we have mainly three points of gyan soul god and drama so these are the three main aspects of gyan so in order to know yourself you also have to know baba because you you must have a reference point with which to know yourself
So if you have a reference point of your uh, physical father, sometimes that may be a good reference point in some things and then not a very good reference point for some other things. <laughs> so maybe he is very polite, but then maybe he doesn't have the power to face or maybe he is very, he has the power to face, but then it borders on rudeness sometimes. So, you know, the, you don't have a reference point for how you want to be and how you are. So Baba says, the more you understand how I am and who I am, you have a reference point with which you can understand who you are and then you become that. So these are the things that Baba is telling us today. Now, when Baba says about this nectar, so Baba today is talking about people who listen to knowledge and people who apply knowledge. So there are, these are two different categories and let's, let me read out those lines for you. So in the question, Baba says, on what basis do the subjects of the golden age become ready at this time? So in the golden age, there will be king, queen, uh, there will be, you know, wealthy people, uh, the sahukars, and then there will be the subjects or the praja. So Baba says, how do you become a praja in the golden age or the subject in the golden age? Baba says, those who are impressed by this knowledge, and say that it is very good, but neither study it nor make effort, they become subjects. To be impressed means to become a subject. In order to become a Sun Dynasty king or queen, effort is required. Full attention has to be paid to study. You can receive a high status if you continue to stay in remembrance and also inspire others to do the same. Now Baba says, if you only get impressed, yes, what is the sign of being impressed? Every day, that point was very nice in the Murli, yes. And then Baba said this and it was very nice and it, it really made me feel very good. But then when it comes to practice, not doing it. Yes, so what are you practicing? So I will tell you one thing from experience, from my journey as a spiritual seeker. What I have felt is sometimes knowing things can give you the illusion that you are doing them. So, you know, sometimes you just know something and then you feel like you're doing it. So, I've seen so many people who are every day putting on weight and talking about weight loss and they think they're losing weight. <laughs> so, whenever you sit with them, they will talk about food and the right diet and exercise and then in practical reality, their weight is shooting up every day but then uh, when you listen to them, it looks like I, uh, you don't even have the courage to point that out because they, it looks like they must be doing whatever they are saying. If they can speak so much on it, then they must be doing something about it. So, you know, sometimes this, this whole thing about uh, knowing a lot can give you an illusion that you are doing everything. But then Baba says that if you maintain a chart properly and check, you know, whether you woke up at Amrit Vela and whether you sat attentively and whether you could, you know, streamline your thoughts and take it in a certain direction. So, you know, there are some um, brothers and sisters who tell me that I did not have a good experience in Amrit Vela. So, how many of you have tried getting up in the morning? 4 a.m. So, you are trying. Others are not even trying. So, you have to try. <laughs> so, if, 
if you are trying then what what are you trying for that's one question like sometimes people will say that i woke up at amrit vela and i did not get a good experience but then it's not about getting an experience it's about creating an experience <laughs> so how you will experience amrit vela depends on how much you work for it yes and why only amrit vela every experience is a creation of your man and buddhi so if you do not take the make the effort to you know push aside or you know just uh, reject the thoughts that do not serve you and those are waste in nature if you just if you don't make that effort to sift your thoughts and if you don't allow the elevated ones to linger on and change into an experience and the not low, not so powerful ones to just go away if you don't do this mental sifting you will not be able to experience anything or create an experience let's take for example when you sit and you try to think i am a soul then something else will pop into your mind does that happen yes so something else some other thought you know something about the weather will pop in or something about the current situation will pop in or something else you know something about which is not even remotely related to you will come to your mind and then what you tell your mind is this is a waste thought so you just reject it you sit like a master and you keep rejecting the thoughts that don't serve you and keep focusing on the thoughts that you want to build on and if you if you don't sit in the position of a master and you start creating thoughts like what do i do with my mind it is not cooperating with me or why am i getting these kind of thoughts then you have moved from rejection to resistance so a powerful one can reject but a not so powerful will keep resisting and what you resist will persist so when you when you put take this weak position within yourself and then you try to juggle with your thoughts and you try to you know tell them not to come or beg and plead to them then they will start increasingly taking over you so baba says when you sit you should sit in the awareness that you are a soul and this is your mind so you are sitting for some time with your mind as a master and you are asking your mind to think the thoughts and create the feelings that you want to experience and you are using your buddhi to create the scene and the experience that you want to live at this moment so baba says this is what you do in meditation now you know about meditation you know the right time to meditate but you don't make the right effort then you will not be successful in having any experience or any power or anything so baba says there are some who are only impressed by the gyan impressed by what is being told but they are not putting it into practice how many of you think you are actually putting it into practice and i will tell you if you don't make the effort it could be it is very possible that you spend 30 50 years in gyan and you have done nothing it is very possible so i will tell you a very funny story about this there was this classmate i had and he got a zero in the exam so it was graduation and he got a zero and then he the teacher called him and he said you have 80% attendance i must congratulate you on the zero so uh, we all started laughing and then he said then the teacher said you know 80% of the classes you attend and it is a feat to not listen to anything <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so it requires deep hard work you know to attend 80% of the classes and not listen to anything and how could you manage to get this zero it is wonderful <laughs> So, literally the teacher made us a clap for him and then he said, what is the problem? Then you, you are sitting in the class, you're not even looking at the window, you're sitting straight faced and you are listening to everything. You could at least get a 1 or a 4 or a 5. This 0 is amazing. So, so you know, Baba also says that and you know, students are capable of that. So do you understand, we are those people who are capable of that. <laughs> so Baba says, if you sit in a class, make it a point to do what you understand. And in, in spiritual matters, it is all the more, you know, um, all the more possible to have this kind of a situation because we have always heard that if you listen to the Gita, then you know, you will be uh, taken uh, you know across so you don't you will not be taken across by listening to the Ramayana or Gita <laughs> you will be taken across if you do as it is said so Baba says I am telling you everything you have to do as I say and Baba says that so those who are impressed will only become subjects and not king or queen and Baba says that, and by study, Baba doesn't mean only the Murli. I have told you very often in the course also that this Raj Yoga study has four subjects. Knowledge, Yoga, Dharana, that is the, Im the imbibing of divine virtues, the first one of which is purity. So purity is the foundation of all virtues. So imbibing divine virtues is dharana and the first virtue is purity. And then the fourth is seva, that is doing spiritual service, inspiring others to follow the spiritual path, whether it is through words or through actions or through, you know, in any other way. So Baba says that is Seva. So these are the four parts of study. So when Baba says pay attention to study, so Murli is necessary, then remembrance is necessary. Take time to remember Baba. And then third thing is take, pay attention to purity and other divine virtues. And then fourth is pay attention to Seva. So these are the things that Baba is saying. Now, today Baba says that, so Baba, Baba says that oh, you have been listening to stories until now. Okay, now you have listened to the Ramayana and to the Gita and to Mahabharat. And Baba says, all those are stories, but they are not true stories. Okay, now why does Baba say it's not a true story? Because A, Baba says, when you say Satya Narayan Katha, okay, so in Bhakti people attend and, uh, you know, organize these Kathas or stories and one of the famous ones is the Satya Narayan Ki Katha. And Baba says that in the Satya Narayan Ki Katha, you say that anybody who listens to this Katha will become Narayan. But then nobody becomes that. <laughs> so that is why it is not true. And then Baba says, in the story of uh, Ramayan also, or Mahabharat also, or Gita also, everything that is written is written by a human. And that may be true at that point of time, that is, it may be relevant for that point of time, but right now it is not relevant. Okay, so let's understand this a little. So when you say truth, truth means eternal and unchangeable. So Baba says that is not true because 
whatever is written or professed in the, those stories is not eternally true that is it doesn't hold true at all times so if you look at the gita or the ramayan vis-a-vis -vis gyan what you are learning today i will tell you the main difference between the teachings in the gita and ramayan and the teachings that baba is giving us is that of values and virtues so the main difference is the difference between values and virtues so when you say value value means do this don't do that this is right this is wrong okay and knowledge is about virtues that is you are peaceful you are loveful you are happy knowledge doesn't tell you what to do what not to do or what is right or what is wrong knowledge tells you who you were who you are and who you need to become okay so now let's understand the difference between these no virtues and values that i'm talking now let's take a simple example from the ramayan now the ramayan says that the value system that a woman or a wife should follow is that when her husband goes to exile she should follow him and even if that exile is for 14 years or you know even if that exile has come about because of a promise that the husband's father made just like that to somebody <laughs> and then you because that exile has come about so the woman needs to uh, follow the husband because the husband is going to exile because he wants to be uh, dedicated to his father and be a good son so now do you believe today in the concept in this concept of what a good son or a good wife means so how many of you believe in that how many of you say that a good wife is like that or a good son should be like that so you know this this whole concept of a good son good wife good husband good 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 this good that is wreaking havoc with our lives <laughs> and baba says it is what it is so you don't see yourself as a wife or a husband or a son or a you see yourself as a soul and you recognize that you have to fill yourself with power you don't try to be a good wife or a good employee or a good son or a good daughter without working on yourself that won't work so baba says at this time value systems are only making you very very judgmental and this is why the youth these days have a big problem with value systems but then without value systems what is the answer so we have worked with value systems for so long for decades for centuries we have worked with the value systems and with this concept of you know how do you be a good wife or a good husband or a good son or a good daughter or a good father or a good mother or good employee good boss so we have worked with these concepts of um, based on value systems for centuries and then today we some people have realized that it is redundant and it's no longer working but then what is the antidote to that so what is the answer so baba is giving us the the knowledge about who you are and what your virtues are and baba says it's not to fit in the mold of the role but it's to recognize yourself and to be honest and powerful within that you get in touch with your qualities so you try to understand that you are a soul and you are peaceful loveful blissful and try to sit in meditation and reinforce this 
peaceful, powerful, loveful self within you and you are not doing it for the husband or the father or the wife or the son. You are doing it for yourself. So Baba says, also the, the most, um, so I think, you know, even in religion, there is a lot of, um, there is a big aspect of looking good. So you, know, you, you want to look good or else you will be punished or you will be, uh, you know, what do you say, you know, you, you will be ostracized or they will ask you to leave the religion or so there is this looking good for others in religion also. And then in spirituality, it is not about looking good. It's about being good for yourself. So the spiritual path is not for anybody. So you see, I will tell you one thing. Um, when I uh, when I was new in Gyan and then I had just started doing my Amrit Vela and then I would do it sometimes. I would be able to get up and sometimes I couldn't get up and I just slept. So, so then there was this person visiting our visiting my place and this person was in Gyan for very long and obviously they they were doing regular Amrit Vela. So when they were visiting me and they knew I am a BK and uh, they I knew that they are old uh, old practitioners. So then I started getting very stressed. And then one of my friends noticed that I'm very stressed. So I, they asked me, why are you stressed? So I said, you know, now I have to do Amrit Vela every day. <laughs> so they said, no, no, what is this have to? Why do you have to do? So I said, I have to do because you see, they will judge me. And then probably they will tell me that uh, you are a BK and you've undertaken the course. And then you are reading, listening to Murli every day. And then you don't get up in the morning. So then I said, they will judge me. So they said, no, you, the first statement is good that you have to do Amrit Vela every day. But not because they will judge you. Because if they judge you, that's their problem, not yours. This is what you're learning, right? But you have to do Amrit Vela for yourself. So I said, yeah, but that I do, that I'm already trying, but now I have to do it for them. So, so that friend said, no, no, you don't have to do anything for anybody. You do not out of guilt or shame or, you know, fear. So, you know, whenever you do things in religion, sometimes it's out of guilt or shame or fear. But when you are on the spiritual path, you do everything because you realize it. So spiritual path is the path for the realized. It's not a path for realization because realization Baba has already given us. So he knows, we know who we are and who we belong to and everything. But when we realize who we are, we start walking on that path. So knowledge Baba gives us everything. You know, Baba doesn't... But you don't have to make effort to know something or, you know, for even for doing something, Baba gives you the power. But when you have realized that the, the you, when you have realized that you're worthy and that you matter and everything you do is important for the universe. And then you realize that you you have the ability to contribute. So why not? So these things you realize and then what you do after that realization is the spiritual path. So Baba says that when you do not do or do not pay attention to study, that is the four aspects, Gyan, Yoga, Dharna, Seva, you are not paying attention to, then it means that you have not understood anything. And only getting impressed and saying this is very good doesn't mean anything. Okay. So this is Baba's Murli today. And then the blessing today is, the blessing today is very interesting and uh, it will require a little explanation. 
So in the blessing, Baba says, may you awaken your luck with the light and might of knowledge and become a constant embodiment of success. Now Baba uses these two words, light and might of knowledge. So knowledge is light. It makes you realize, but then knowledge is also might. It gives you power. So let me tell you one thing that, um, one thing is you know you are a peaceful soul. And, the, and another thing is that by virtue of this knowledge that you are a peaceful soul, you are able to handle situations. So whenever you are in the midst of something and you just pull up this piece of knowledge, I'm a peaceful soul and I can stay calm, come what may. And when you just sit in the, in the light of knowledge, it gives you might. And in that might, you become more powerful than the situation or the behavior that is in front of you. So Baba says, I give you so many points of knowledge and I give you the light about what is true, what is untrue, what is the way to be, what is not the way to be. But then in that light, if you just see clearly what is the course of action or the consciousness you should follow. And then if you just do that, you get, get the might of that practice. So. One thing is you know that the right time to get up is 4 a.m. But another thing is getting up and taking the power that is available by meditating at 4 a.m. So Baba says this is the light and might. And Baba says when you put both these into execution, what you get is success. Okay. Now Baba says, Children who make effort while knowing the beginning, middle and end. Beginning, middle and end means you have come to know the whole drama. That is who we were and how we have become what we have become because of the vices. So you know the virtues and you know the vices. So Baba says, children who make effort while knowing the beginning, middle and end with the light and might of knowledge definitely achieve success. To achieve success is also a sign of luck because you see knowledge is given to so many but um, there is no explainable reason why some people apply it and uh, take the might, some don't. So Baba says it is a luck. So in the Murli, Baba says, Tagdeer Jaga ke aai ho. And Baba uses a very nice expression, Tagdeer Tadbeer Karvati hai. Tagdeer means it's your fortune which makes, uh, which helps you make the effort. Tadbeer is the effort. Now, and you know, the vice versa is also true, which is Tadbeer se Tagdeer Banti hai. So when you make the effort, you create the destiny. But then it is destiny which makes you make the effort also. Otherwise, there is no reason why some people just start making the effort and some are in, the, in this path forever and they don't make effort. So Baba says, It isn't just having the knowledge of the creator and the creation, but to be knowledgeful means to be an embodiment of knowledge in every thought, word and action. So in whatever we do, do we keep Baba's knowledge in our head and heart and then discern and decide according to that? So Baba says, and then you will be an embodiment of success. If you are not able to see success, now let's listen to this. If you are not able to see success, even while making the right effort, then you must understand that it is not your failing, but a means for you to become more mature and strong. Now, this is something we need to understand at this point of time. 
sometimes you you make a lot of effort and you make the right effort right effort means again you know sometimes people say i made the right effort but then when you check it according to gyan sometimes that effort did not include everything for example somebody worked hard but they didn't stay light here so they created negative energy here and with the hands they kept working so that's not the right effort but if you have made the right effort that is you have kept your inner energy clean and also done work with your hands and done whatever you could and still you don't achieve success then baba says you should know that this is not your failing this has come to make you stronger that is whatever you are facing on the way whatever obstacles whatever failures are coming are coming to to you know create endurance inside you now why is baba specifying this thing so let's understand that there are situations come to make us stronger but situations come also because we do not do our bit yes so situations when situations are coming and you feel the discomfort of the situation then there could be two reasons possibly one reason is because you are not putting in the right effort and the second reason could be that they have come just to make you stronger okay now what happens is if we don't get it correctly then sometimes the situation is asking us to do better but we are not listening to it and we are just going with the positivity it has come to make me stronger <laughs> but we are not doing our bit in that and then sometimes you know you have done your bit and then there the situation is still there and then what you do is you start complaining about the validity of the efforts that uh, that you have made so you know right is not right and then we shouldn't make efforts or we should give up so baba says where you had to use perseverance you just drain all your energy with this negative thinking so baba says first check whether there is something you needed to do which you have not done and then do it and then after your heart is satisfied that i have done whatever i needed to do then you should take the help of baba and just wait with positivity for things to change okay so and, and so you know there is karma and there is drama so effort and acceptance both have to go together if if one is more than the other then the balance is a little lopsided okay om shanti